What's up, everyone? Welcome to episode 48. A couple of good guests tonight on the show. We got Ryan Patton, host of Patton's Place, the morning show on Sirius XM NHL Channel 91. He's going to talk uh, NHL offseason, including some of the moves the Bruins made, also some moves around the league. Talk on the Tavares situation, how he all saw it go down, that type of thing. Then we got the camera guys, Glennon Moose from NBC Sports Boston joining us. Give us a behind the scenes look into what they do. They've talked to a lot of uh, pretty impressive athletes around Boston. So there's some of their favorite moments, that kind of thing. So definitely look forward to that about the 30 minute mark or so. Then Chris and I are going to touch on Red Sox last week. Uh, impact Thornburg could have on the bullpen. Uh, touch on the Patriots, how are they going to adapt with pa- uh, Edelman still being suspended. Then we'll wrap up the episode. So here we go. Now we got Ryan joining us. What's up, Ryan? How's it going, man? Doing well. How are you guys? Doing there. good. Yeah. It's hot. <laughs> Oh, oh yeah. yeah, we've been having this uh, big heat wave, probably the same thing with you, but uh, no, it's been good. It's been uh, so far a pretty good start to the summer. Yeah, absolutely. Pretty big, pretty busy off season. Uh, you're up in Toronto, so, uh, you know, John Tavares, how's everyone dealing with it up there? Are they doing okay? Oh yeah, doing okay? Yeah, for <laughs> sure. <laughs> I think they've started the parade on Front Street already. Um, yeah, no, I mean, it's, 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 it's a big, it's a a big deal. I mean, uh, any team that landed John Tavares, it would have been big, but, um, it's one of these, these fishes that the Leafs have always said they've been trying to get for so long and they finally got one. Um, you know, I look back to the Steven Stamco situation, all the rumors that he may sign in Toronto a couple of years ago, and then he didn't re-sign with Tampa, took less to stay in Tampa. And the Leafs failed on that one, but they finally get their man in the Tavares, and he's made the team that much stronger. And um, yeah, fans are fans are excited, and the organization is excited as well. And I think you know, but there's the whole bittersweet thing too. You have to look at what the Isles uh, lost uh, in one of the you know the the best players in the game today. But absolutely exciting for Toronto. Yeah, it's funny because I had talked to you. What was it Wednesday morning, maybe even Thursday? When I was asking about yeah, coming yeah. on, and I said, "So, what are you thinking?" You're like, "Oh, you know, I think it's going to be Toronto." You know, yeah. the fandom is like, "Oh man, I hope this guy's wrong," but uh, you weren't. <laughs> and yeah, there's there's a lot of people who are angry at the virus, but how can you really be mad at him from wanting to go home to play? That's pretty much all I'm looking at right now. Yeah. You know what, uh, if, if, and I'll say this, if you have a chance to go home and play in your hometown, a team that you grew up watching in basically the prime of your, you know, NHL career, um, and you're paid that amount of money, go ahead. Uh, he certainly earned the right to, to try. And I remember the conversation we had last week about that. And, and I, I had in my mind, I know that he met with six different teams, but I had in my mind, even before he met face to face, two on each day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I thought that he had written down San Jose, the Islanders, and the Maple Leafs already before he met with the other teams, the Bostons, the Tampas, and Dallas. Um, And it was just one of those things that it was the comfort level that he felt. I think family played a huge part in this. And, you know, his fiance um, has a position close to Toronto and the family's there as well. And he tweeted out that picture, guys. You've probably seen it, the one where he, you know, slept in those Toronto Maple Leaf bed sheets. So, it's him coming home, and I know a lot of Islanders fans certainly not happy about it, and they have a right to be, because you know the team's certainly taken a couple of steps back now. But um, good for John; he had the right to do it, um, and uh, and he chose Toronto to come back home. Now, obviously, that's a huge boost for the Maple Leafs organization, the fans, yeah. and everything up and down. But how do they go about? addressing their defense, which is clearly, to me, their weak spot on the team. Yeah, you know what? That And, and that's been the question that a lot of us have been asking, right, for a long time. I mean, this, this, team, this team doesn't have a true number one defenseman. 
But the more you think about that, and if you look over, I mean, look at what Vegas did, uh, an incredible run, right? Did they have that number one defenseman? Do they have, you know, a P.K. Subban or do they have an Eric Carlson, a Drew Doughty, Brent Burns? No, they didn't. It was kind of, you know, defenseman by committee. I think that's what the Maple Leafs are seeing as successful. I don't think they, they, they feel that they need a number one defenseman. I think Kyle Dubas coming in as this young GM now, uh, taking over from Lou Lamorello. And I think he just he has this mentality of let's let's put some younger guys on the back end. We have a number one goaltender. We're confident in him. Now we've signed a John Tavares who has improved our team tremendously down the middle and as a unit. So maybe we don't need that, you know, that top guy in the blue line. Maybe we can get by with the Morgan Rileys and, and the Jake Gardners and, you know, the Nikita Zaitsevs and what have you, you know, sprinkle in Ron Hainsey and, you know, Travis Dermott. So uh, I don't know if, I think if, if they end up losing, of course, and, and the d- defense is exposed as again being weak, that's going to be the topic of conversation. But I really do think they have so much confidence in the forwards uh, units they have in the goaltender that, uh, I think they're okay as for the time being. Not saying they're not going to try to upgrade the defensive unit, but I think they're all right with the uh, you know the six seven guys they have right now. Are you comfortable with Anderson in that going forward? Do you think he's capable of bringing a cup to you? Yeah, you know, to me, is that correct? yeah? Well, <laughs> I love it. No, no, no. I know what you mean. Yeah. Um, the 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 worry I have about him is the the workload, and I know that these you know these goaltenders. You know, they get paid a ton of money, and a lot of them play a lot of games, 60, 65 games, whatever it is. That's a lot. And when you face as many shots as Freddie Anderson did last season, when you're constantly trying to, you know, not constantly, when you're trying to keep the Leafs in some games, I wonder if the wear and tear on him is is going to, you know, be seen down the road a bit. But at the same time, there was a number of times last season, guys, that after one uh, some games, you could see it on his face. He said, look, we have to be better. They have to be better in front of me. I can't do this myself. I think the Leafs know that. They know what they have in goal. They do have a, fi- a number one. And uh, if they're willing to try to make some moves on the back end, that's fine. But uh, I think the structure, at least for the time being, is essential to the Leafs' success. And I do think that Freddie Anderson is that goaltender that can you know, bring the Leafs to Stanley Cup, hopefully. Interesting. Now, do you feel with the acquisition right now, John, that the Maple Leafs are now the favorite in the Atlantic? Or how do you feel about that? Yeah, that's a good question. You know what? I think that I know that the odds came out uh, a little while ago, and uh, the best odds to this was before the free agency period began on July 1. Uh, the best odds to win the Stanley Cup. Uh, we're Tampa Bay, and uh, I think Tampa Bay has to be one of the favorites. I do think Toronto has to be looked at as to come out of the Atlantic. I know that Boston and Tampa, they were one and two since pretty much the drop of the puck, right, in opening night last season. And you always knew that it was going to be those two, and then Toronto would be three, and then it would be who would be facing who in the first round. But it, it's hard to argue against this move by getting John Tavares, that the Leafs are not – uh, in contention for that top spot. Tampa Bay, though, still a uh, tremendous hockey team, top to bottom, and they're going to be there again. Boston, I'm not sure uh, the whole Rick Nash situation and different things like that, but uh, I would put Toronto as one of the favorites. And, yeah, it does have to be uh, have to do with number 91 now signing with the Leafs. See, I think the Bruins and Toronto are going to be at Jenna's throat for many years to come. It's going to be a lot of the playoff yeah. series between the two going forward. Yeah, and and you know what, that that would be great because we know that the Leafs and Bruins, whenever they meet, whether it's the season or the playoffs, uh, it, it's it's fantastic. And if you look at the other teams too in the Atlantic, uh, Detroit, I mean, if they're in this rebuild, it could have shocked me because I don't think the moves they've made look like a rebuild. And the Panthers, that's a team that could surprise as well and move ahead next season. But just those three, Tampa, Boston, Toronto, I just think they're so strong even before the season has gotten underway. I know we're months away from it, but it's hard to not put them one, two, three in the Atlantic. Awesome. You got any questions, Steve? Yeah. Um, how do you feel about the Bruins off season so far? Yeah, uh, it's, you know, it, uh, I'm not surprised about, about what, what the team has done or even what they haven't done. The The thing that I was, you know, last season, for me, 
um, they, I'm not going to say they surprised, but this team went on a huge run, right? Uh, I think it was from December, January, whatever it was, they were one of the best um, in the game. And and they still are to me. Uh, I think that on the back end, I mean, Chara's coming back. You kind of knew that was going to happen. Um, he's 41. He plays like he's 25, 26. I mean, it's just it's amazing what he does to keep himself in shape. Uh, Tory Krug on the back end is and Charlie McAvoy. I mean, the sky's the limit for both these guys. And Tuka Rask and goal, they brought Halak in to try to spell Rask a bit um, as that top goaltender in Boston. And then they have on the top side, you know, they, they, the Bergerons and David Pasternak. Uh, you know, they're both, what, in, in, in their 30s, Pasternak in the 20s, 22. Um, Brad Marchand, again, uh, signed for a number of seasons, but a Hart Trophy candidate. So I think they like what they had. I think they like what they have now going forward as well. And that's the thing. When, when, when you're a team in the NHL and you see all these other clubs making big moves, you have to look at what you have. And do we have enough to get back to that point? I think Boston does. Will they, they have to make the decision, or Rick Nash does, as to what he's going to do with his future. But I like Boston's makeup. And again, back to what we talked about, the Atlantic. It's hard to bet against those three teams, Tampa, Toronto, Boston, being there again, one, two, three next year. Sweet. So I want to play a little game of, around the wheel, so to speak. I want to okay. throw some names to you, and I want your best guess on Will they be playing when the puck drops next season? You ready? I'm all set. Go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Panarin. That's tough. Uh, you hit me with the tough one <laughs> off the top. Look, when, you, when you're a guy who is basically saying, I don't want to talk extension, I'm just going to say this. Columbus, whatever you do, don't fall into the John Tavares trap again. And if you know that he's not going to re-sign or if you have that feeling, trade him. Um, I think he's going to be with Columbus, though, uh, for most of the season. I really do. Maybe by the deadline he'll be gone, but I think he'll be there for a few months. Okay. Uh, Wayne Simmons. That's a good one. Uh, One of my favorites, too, in the NHL. You know, I could even see him going back to the whole Boston discussion. I know that Philly, you know, getting James Van Riemsdyk, you kind of look at the Flyers now, and is Wayne Simmons going to be the UFA in 2019? Um, what about a Boston? Uh, if they have the cap space, again, it's all going to come down to cap space uh, when it comes to the deadline next season and even beyond with that 2019 class. But I could see him staying as much as you know teams don't want to trade within the division, even outside the division in the conference. I could see him maybe going to a Boston. I think that would be a good fit. Oh, absolutely. Well, I love that idea. Yeah. What, would it take to get... <laughs> <laughs> what would it take to get him? What would they have to give up? Yeah, you know what? That's and this is the thing with Wayne Simmons. He he to me is even if you call him, but yeah, I, I'd call him the power forward. He's the best in the game. Um, he's got the size, the speed, the hands, the agility, and he can take over a game when he wants to. And he's got he has the passion. I mean, I know a lot of these guys do because they play in the NHL. But uh, I mean, he really does, and he's been through so much in his life. But I would look at a Wayne Simmons as at least uh, a guy on the roster. A uh, first round pick, and I don't think I go any more than that to begin with. But if you again, if you know in these teams, I I hope that they, you know, Philly is an example of this. If if they know that they have an inkling that they're not going to be able to re-sign Wayne Simmons, make sure you don't stay with them too long. That's with all due respect to him because you want to get something back that you can have on that roster right away and also down the pipe. But uh, I think he should expect a lot uh, because that's what I think he brings to teams. A lot of us think that Krug's going to get traded this off season. Whether it happens or not remains to be seen. Yeah. So um, moving right along, uh, Skinner. Boy, uh, these are tough guys. <laughs> 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 um, Jeff Skinner. He's uh, to me, it's it's amazing that he's you know still on the Carolina Hurricanes, and uh, you know the uh, you listen to what Rod Brindamore said. Um, the other week about Jeff Skinner and you know he's still young and and he's still you know he still is so productive but he's just not on this team that that is that I'm not gonna say they're not going in the right direction but I think he just offers so much more to a club that's already in that direction but um, he could be he could be great with with anybody I mean if you're looking for somebody who can score your goals and um, who can you know put some pucks on on the power play as well I think any team would any team would like him 
Um, but I don't know if Carolina is going to do kind of a trade within the within the division or something like that. But that's a tough one. A lot of teams have been you know asking about him. They've been focusing on him. Um, Don Waddell, it's no secret that he's he's shopping him because again it goes back to this John Tavares thing. You want to try to get as much back for a guy if you know that they're not going to resign. So um, he's a pure scorer. Uh, he can get 30, maybe 40. If he's on a better team than Carolina, you know, probably 40, may, maybe. Um, but it's going to be tough because he certainly is an asset that the Canes want to uh, want a lot back. He's only 26 as well. You know, let's not forget that. I, I sometimes think he's about 30 because he's been in the league for so long. But um, yeah, these these are these are tough ones. If I could predict, if I had the crystal ball, if I could predict correctly, then you know maybe I'd be the GM right now in the NHL. <laughs> Right. Well, my final final guy is uh, Eric Carlson. Uh, it's first of all, what a, what a disaster, right? In in oh, Ottawa, yeah. I, I hate saying that about yeah. I, I, I hate saying that about teams, and and I know it's tough. I know the NHL is a tough league. It's a game, but it's a business. Um, Eric Carlson, when healthy, is one of if not the best defensemen in the NHL. Uh, I don't think that he's going to resign. I said this last summer as well. I said that John Tavares would not resign with the Isles. And I said Drew Doughty would resign with the Kings on two for two. And I don't think Carlson, even before this Mike Hoffman nonsense that happened, and he was dealt. I still don't think he's going to come back to to Ottawa. But, um, you know, there's rumors floating around that he's interested in Nashville. Um, Pierre Dorian said that Eric's been, you know, other teams are now, you know, being able to talk to him about possible deals. Vegas. I think is a great fit. It's a great destination. They've got a ton of cap space. So if you want, you know, if if you look right now, I would say that I could see Eric Carlson in Vegas on a long-term deal um, out of all the, uh, all the 31 teams now in the NHL. He he would be my top pick right now. Oh, very informative. Uh, mm-hmm. That's all I got. You all set Steve. You got anything else? Now I heard that Ottawa offered him eight years and 80 million. Is that what you, have you heard the same thing? Yeah, I did, and I also think, um, yeah, it goes back to the the Drew Doughty, you know, uh, contract as well. So, you know, he obviously he wants the Doughty money, maybe even a bit more, but on par with him. I think, to be honest, guys, why Ottawa did that was just to look good. Um, I think that they, I and and you know, again, that's with all due respect to them. I think they 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 knew they had to do something. They had to get something out in the media that was positive. And even if he doesn't resign, the fact is, is that. Ottawa fans will say, you know what? We tried. Yes, Pierre Dorian said, here's a here's a contract. Uh, we're going to offer you a deal. It's up to you to take it or not. So I think that's why they did that. I, I do believe that they, you know, I'm going to say 75% know that he is not coming back. And, and then that's why shortly after that, uh, the GM came out and said, yeah, other teams have permission now to talk with Carlson, what have you. So um, that, that that's the number that I heard as well. And that's that's on part of what he deserves. You know, him and Drew Doughty pretty much, uh, you know, point for point kind of thing with, with the talent level of those two defensemen. Nice. Yeah, that's so, pretty much uh, all I got. Right. So where can everyone find you on social media? Uh, Twitter handle, uh, at Ryan Payton 75 uh, at SiriusXMNHL. Uh, follow us on that. And, um, yeah, again, I'm on uh, uh, pretty much every day in the morning. And just do kind of some odds and ends throughout the station as well. So, but at, uh, at Ryan Payne seventy five is my is my Twitter handle. Wait, thanks for joining us. Have a good night. Yeah, thank hey you. Hey guys, man. appreciate it, guys. Have a good one. No problem. You too. Anytime. Thanks. Thanks. Wow, good stuff. I like him. Simmons, can you imagine that? <laughs> He's kind of a perfect Bruin. Right, yeah, he is. All right, yeah. you want to take a break? Yeah, it's a good. Let's uh, take a quick break, and then we'll be back with the um, camera guys from NBC, NBC Sports Boston. Stay tuned. I'm Steve. And I'm Chris, a.k.a. The Hood. Join us every Wednesday at 11 a.m. where we break down the week in Boston sports. You never know what we'll come up with or who we'll have on for a guest. So be sure to check us out on 12 Ounce Sports, iTunes, and wherever podcasts are available. Check out our website, www.diehardbossonsportsfans.com. See you on the show. We're out. We are back. Now we got 
Glenn and Moose, the camera guys from NBC Sports Boston. How's it going, fellas? Going really good, fellas. How are you? Hey, guys. Thank you. Hanging in doing there. Doing good. Yeah, doing good, except for the heat. <laughs> yeah. No, it's, brutal. yeah. It's, not easy. it's not easy for the big guys of the world. <laughs> well, you ain't kidding. I'm one of them myself, so don't feel bad. <laughs> with a beard, too, to, to, to boot, so I'm right there with you guys. Right on. That's what you got to have. <laughs> right. So, yeah, you guys have been doing this for a couple months. Like, how did you guys, you know, come up with this idea to do this? Strangely enough. We've always just kind of said that would be something really funny to do. Um, a guy that worked at our place by the name of Tory Champagne actually pitched us last summer. He's since moved on. He's doing a lot more music stuff, and he's he's an extremely talented and creative guy. And he said, "I got to put mics on you guys and just have you guys tell stories." And uh, we were like, "Sure." And uh, a couple of the other guys who work here in production. Um, Adam Hart and Billy Delaney. Uh, Billy really just took the bull by the horns and did the animation, and uh, it, it it was it was really well received. The first few rounds of the animated uh, the, the the cartoons, as we call them. Yeah, it's funny because then you know they were, the the station was sort of like, all right, what do you know? What do we do with this? And and while they were trying to figure it out, we went down to spring training. And we, we were kind of fooling around a little bit. We grabbed Dustin Pedroia one day, and he told us, you know, we should just, you know, what's, what, give us a good story. And he told us the story about, you know, after he had won a World Series, MVP, the whole nine yards, rookie, you know, he'd been around six or seven years, and, and Ortiz had this this uh, this moment during the game where it came to fruition that he didn't really know Dustin Pedroia's actual name. So yeah, like Pedroia. <laughs> yeah, Pedroia followed the pitch off, right? And uh, the the catcher said something to him about Dustin, and uh, Ortiz was like, wait, what did he just call you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that's during the game. Dustin turns around and yeah. goes, what do you mean? He called me Dustin. Why? And he goes, he goes, oh, Petey, right? And he's like, dude, my name's Dustin. You don't even know that? And he's like, come on, bro. What am, what, I'm not supposed to remember everybody's name. He really did not then, know his name. Then Moose, the the thing that we didn't get into is you remember when we were in uh we were in Colorado in oh seven for the World Series and Ortiz had this oh, yeah. hat that he wore in batting practice and not a joke, he had he had we saw it from far away, there was like writing in the brim and uh I just went over to him and I asked him, I was like, What what's that writing? And he was like, It's on my teammates' names. <laughs> and it was like, wait, what? And he was like, yeah, I'm not great with names. I was like, hey, no problem, I get it. You know, you're you're Poppy. You know, it was just just <laughs> stuff like that that we've gotten to hear over the years that just really translates for people who aren't lucky enough to have the types of jobs that we have, where we can be around these guys and they they. I don't think like is the right word, but they certainly appreciate our senses of humor, I guess. Moose, is that right? Or what do you think? Yeah, I'd say the, the reality is we're not going to go up to the guys. We're not trying to work the reporter's side of the fence. So we're not going to go up and say, you know, why'd you strike out three times? Why did this happen? Why did that happen? We're going to keep it light and keep it fun. And, it, and it, it, it gives us an opportunity to get a different side of these guys that most people don't see. And I think that was the big thing that we said to, you know, to, to everybody we work with, like we could bring that out, you know, if, if you let us. And uh, so it's been kind of nice. It's been fun. Yeah. It's, it's the, crazy. Like, sorry, I cut you off. Go ahead. Uh, are you guys surprised that it's taken off as much as it has? Because uh, I've been following you guys for quite a while now and it's a must follow oh, on Twitter. Mm -hmm. No doubt. Oh, that's thank you. That's really kind. <laughs> I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, I don't know, Moose. What do you think? I mean, I, I, yeah, it, it, it's it's it's. I mean, honestly, this whole Twitter sphere thing and all that is it's it's new. We're new to it, um, and and it's sort of it's been it's been a blast. I'm surprised, that, yeah, that it's taken off the way it has, um, but I'm also not surprised that people enjoy seeing a different side of the players that yeah. than you you normally see. And I think that's 
that's the key to the thing. You know, like you go up to a guy, like I just did a thing with, with Patrick Chung last week, and I said to him, hey, let's have a little fun. We'll hop in your car, listen to a radio, blah, blah, blah. And just, you know, fool around. He goes, so wait a minute, do I have to give like Patriot answers for this? And I said, hey, this is, this is you being you. So if that's what you want to do, I said, but that's not really what we're looking for. And he goes, it's about time. He said, it's about time. Like, <laughs> that's awesome. You know, we, we need a place where we can just be ourselves. And I said, yeah. He goes, no, don't, don't let it get too far off the, off the tracks. I said, no, we'll, we'll be okay. It's like a breath of fresh air because a lot of people who report in Boston seem uptight a little bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and yeah. trust me, the guys, the, 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 guys, the guys see that, too, don't you think, Glenn? I mean, that's part of the deal is that, you know, if everybody comes up to you with a hammer and then somebody comes up with a, you know, a cookie, <laughs> you know, you're going to smile and go, oh, yeah. okay, this is kind of cool, right? Yeah, for sure. And, you know, it's, it's like the stuff we do with, like, a palate cleanser. And, listen, the people that we have that do the new stuff, they're all awesome. I mean, it's Giardi, Curran, Perry, Sherrod. Evan, you know, I mean, Joe Hags, like those guys all do such an awesome job with the news aspects of it. And, and they ask the questions that, you know, people want answers to. But like the other cool thing about it is they've all been really cool and supportive and they haven't really gotten territorial yeah. about it. They're like, yeah, right, go do right. your thing and have fun because it's not, we're not trying to take bread off anyone's plate. Like we're just trying to do our thing and yeah. try to make people laugh and have a good time, you know? That's awesome. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. I saw I saw one tweet you guys had where you had a, a picture of Neely and Haggerty on the phones. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm a, yeah, go I'm on, a sorry. massive, massive Neely fan. Yeah. Oh, Glenn, yeah. Gee, that's that's our wheelhouse. That's Glenn's. That's, yeah. 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 Get in like, line. <laughs> like, yeah. He's yeah like, exactly. <laughs> he's like the dream like sports guest from a athlete perspective. You know what's funny oh, is we, we you know you see him around the rink right, and you're like oh my god we we want to do something with Neely and and every time yeah. you see him you're like. If I say something to him, you feel like he's going to pull the shirt over your head and start up. Yeah. Right here, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you know, he's going to go after us like Paul <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, you're like, okay, I don't really want to piss this guy off. I think I'm just going to, you know, we'll, we'll we'll get him another time. Yep, next time we'll get yep. him. Yep, plenty of time, plenty of time. <laughs> Have you guys you know, ever had any interaction with him? Oh, yeah. Just, I mean, it's, listen, I, it's not like, hey, buddy, but it's like, hey, Cam, how you yeah. doing? And, like, one yeah. time during the during the playoffs this past season, like, I kind of was a little bit spread out on a dining room table, and there was no room, so he came to sit down. And I said, listen, I'm going to make room. I'm not looking for any trouble from you. I know it would end up if I started anything <laughs> with you. And, like, we both right. started laughing about it. He's like, don't worry about it. I'm like, no, 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 it's, I got it. Don't worry. <laughs> Yeah, uh, th- those guys, those guys are awesome. The Bruins players are awesome, and, and you know, you mentioned Glenn too, like how the how the, um, the reporters have helped us out, like you know, with each beat, like Sherrod Blakely, who covers our Celtics stuff, he gave me a big assist when you know I don't know if you guys saw this, it was a little earlier on Twitter, but Brad Stevens let me do a tryout for the team. Oh God, that was and, so that was awesome. <laughs> Yeah, yeah that thanks. Was awesome. And Sherrod was huge. He was like, you know, you know, he just kind of had my back. And you know, when I said to Brad Stevens, uh, I said, hey, you know, you guys are a little shorthanded. You, you know, what do you think? And he's like, yeah, sure. <laughs> and he kind of laughed. And I went, no, coach. I'm like, no, coach. Like right now, you need to try me out. And he goes, <laughs> he goes. He looks at me and he just kind of pauses for me. And he goes, yeah, I think we need to do this. okay let's do it but it was awesome i mean didn't you guys think that was great like i don't know brad stevens that well compared to some of the other sports and so like i always had this dry sort of you know vision of him and then we do this thing and and, like he's cracking jokes left and right it was great to see that yeah he seems kind of like nonchalant a little bit kind of easy going yes yes He's he's got that yeah, drive. He's a that's wicked great. humble guy. Wicked humble guy. And I think I don't know him that well either, but he's 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 sneaky funny, you know, for sure. 
By the way, did you guys know that Glenn will be uh, actually, you know, similar to the tryouts I had with the Celtics, Glenn is going to get uh, a tryout with the Bruins. We already talked to Coach about it. And, uh, oh, no freaking way. Is, <laughs> yeah, Fantastic. All for it. You guys just picture uh, Al Iafredi, okay? I don't know if you guys remember him, right? Uh, oh, yeah. I remember oh, that. yeah. Yeah, picture yep. You know, it was great when when I when I asked him if uh, Glenn could have a tryout. I said, you know, I, that's what I told him. I said, picture Al Iafredi. He goes, you know, I skated with Al Iafredi. And I go, you did? And they go, I go, did he smoke cigarettes? He goes, a lot of cigarettes. <laughs> he, he, he said, so the first time he got up on a he got up on a on a bus back in the old days in the minor leagues, got in the bus. He said the whole back of the bus was just filled with cigarette smoke because all the guys were just you know, <laughs> were burning butts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he seems like a pretty chill dude too, Cassidy. Yeah, yeah, it's it's funny. He's like, uh, I mean, he's he's totally Canadian, you know. He's like, yeah, polite, mm-hmm. but uh, it's funny. Once you see him, like, not in a bad way, going downhill on the anger train, man, he gets pretty fired up. But he's he's mm-hmm. really been great to deal with. He's, like, extremely nice and just I, – I think he knows, you know, he had a rough go of it in Washington, his, his first shot as a head coach. And not that any of those guys ever take it for granted, but I think he certainly is very appreciative of the position he's in because <laughs> – as yeah. Joe Hags has said, like the Bruins could very much be the third best team in the NHL next season and only in third place in their division. Right. Yeah, <laughs> right? that's crazy. Yeah. With, uh, with the virus thing. But, like, I don't know, man. Hockey's my thing. That's, like, my thing. And football is Moose's thing for sure, you know. And uh, we just sort of love playing off each other. And as Patriots roll around, we're going to be working together more. So we're kind of going to get to – Mm-hmm. Just goof around with guys more often and have more fun, you know. Great, that's kind of. That's what I'm thinking anyway. I don't know. Maybe, maybe Absolutely. Moose has already signed a deal with William Morris, and I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> have you had any interaction with Belichick at all? Oh God. Yeah. Well, he's kind of yeah. like, stay away from me. I don't want to deal with you right now. <laughs> you know uh, very. You know yeah, go ahead, Glenn. Uh, you go ahead, man. You've had more of it than I have. With, with, you know, coach. we used to do this. We used to do this thing where you would do an interview uh, afterwards. So uh, it would end up a couple of t- like a couple times where I'm just kind of standing in a room. It would just be me and him, and maybe somebody else. And so you're standing there. You're like, do I make small talk? Do I not? And the thing that would always save me is I would either go old school Giants or NFL films archives, and the guy was like chatty Kathy, like it was crazy he loves talking old school football and um I, you know to get to know bill belichick i I've, I've always said one of the best um uh moments i think we've had was twice since belichick's been here he's brought us back to to watch well he could break down film for just the media oh yeah and it oh, was God, it was awesome. it's incredible like so he, as awkward as he is in front of the media in front of people put him in front of uh you know a, a screen breaking down film and he's a savant i mean he is literally oh, like dude uh, like einstein in you know? physics mm. <laughs> yeah. you can man, where his... remember that the the sorry man i'm stepping on your toes no, but the ahead. thing i remember the most about that was uh he was diagramming this play um, and it was um, it was the Giants against the 49ers uh, yep. in one of the NFC Championship games, and he was and he was talking about Montana, and he loves Montana, and uh, he said, and he broke it down. He's like, you know, and you know, Lawrence was here, and Pepper was here, and I mean, we defended this play perfectly, and the son of a bitch still hit us on it, and like he had this like <laughs> unbelievable memory about it. And, like, you could tell he was still a little bit mad because it was defended perfectly, but Montana made the perfect pass. And it's just – I just thought it was a wild look into what makes him tick. And it was really cool that we got to do that, I think. Oh, amazing. Amazing. Yeah, because, you know, we've been to – we've been to a different – we've been to – you know, we've covered all the different championships and things like that. But that is something that will always stand out for sure. Yeah, no doubt. I like the segment you had with Hightower talking about 
uh, Georgia, Alabama, and, and then you guys sprung it on Mitchell and uh, the new dude, uh, Sonia. Yeah. I don't know how to pronounce his name. <laughs> yeah, so, so Michelle, yep. I think. Tony, Michelle. Yep, yep, yeah. yep. And, you know, it's, it is funny because they are definitely, um, you know, they're, they're a confident group. But I'll tell you what, you get, you get in a room with Hightower, I, I would venture to guess there's probably not going to be a lot of trash talking going on. He is a big dad. He's a big and bad right. dude. You know? <laughs> but, you know, it's, it is funny. You'll see every once in a while you'll see those bets going on. You'll, you'll see Brady after, like, a, a Michigan-Ohio State game, and he's wearing, like, something Ohio State in the locker room, and he's lost a bet. So there's nobody that's above that fray. Yeah. Oh, nice. <laughs> it's almost like uh, – friendly instigation that goes on it seems with some of the skits a little bit at times yeah in a friendly man yeah. i should say yeah no no absolutely i mean that's and that and that's the thing and honestly we're tr- we're sort of mirroring what we see in the locker room those guys go back and forth with each other about their alma maters or different things so you know when you get a guy uh, uh to sit down with you you kind of have an idea of what what they like to fool around about, you know what I mean? So you try to tap, you know, we try to tap into that when we, when we have them, you know, and, and I think that's sort of the other side of these guys that you, you don't definitely don't normally get to see the locker room side, so to speak. Have you the, have you the one of you ever had uh sit down with someone where you were like, holy crap, I'm actually talking to this player. I'll starstruck a little bit, I guess. <laughs> May I? <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, this is, it's uh, mine. Mine is Cam Neely. I still get Ooh. weirded out being in his presence. Like he's he's Damn. my all time favorite professional athlete ever. And just like even now, like yeah. I was I was only half kidding when I when like he sat down at that table and I was like, okay, I'll move. Don't worry. <laughs> you know, like <laughs> I don't want to be in your way. I'm sorry. Yeah. You know, but. Yeah, I mean, for the most part, no, not really. But Neely is the one that's still kind of, yeah, he. I still kind of, kind of look at him like, oh my God, you're that guy that scored 50 goals in 50 games on one leg, right. like, just right. yeah, he's he, he's my wheelhouse athlete. I, I, I refer think, to him as Jesus Christ on skates. Yeah, yep. <laughs> that's pretty accurate. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty accurate. I, you know, it's funny. I'll give you one out of left field. What mine was uh, uh, Ellis Burks. So when Ellis oh, Burks came back, uh, do you guys remember when he came back to the team? But his knees were all messed up. He was, you know, yeah. you know, when I was, when I, I remember, I was in, you know, he was a guy that I was like, this guy's incredible. Red Sox have never had a guy like him. This athletic, you know, could hit home runs, could steal bases. So, you know, he was a guy that I just loved watching play. And then he came back to the Red Sox. It was such a shame because he had no, you know, he had no cartilage left in his knees. And I, and I, I'm, that year they won the World Series. He was, uh, you know, on that team for part of the year. And um, I ended up one night. He had a friend. He wasn't playing, so he had a friend that uh, owned a owned a bar in New York, and he in, in, invited me and some other people there. And I'm I'm sitting there having a beer with Ellis Burks, and I remember just thinking to myself like this is surreal. Like, this is, you know, just one of those moments, like, you know, where you, you kind of like, is this really happening? You know? It was cool. <laughs> and then you were like, only if Mike Greenwell didn't wreck his knees, he'd be in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> oh, yeah. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> wow. Those are a couple of names I haven't heard in a long time. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Good old Gator. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No doubt. Oh, that's crazy. So what do you guys have coming up in the pipeline? Uh, well, well, I mean, we're actually, I know that, Moose, you're on vacation. Uh, mm-hmm. I will tell you that we'll be doing Red Sox all next week, you and I. Welcome back, yeah, friends. Okay. And <laughs> there you go. So we're, we're going to do some stuff down there for sure. Uh, definitely, we'll probably try to talk some World Cup with Xander. And yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I have something up my sleeves that I'm kind of percolating on that, I need to talk to Bill about a little bit, but uh, yeah, I'll tell I you think, one uh, one that I one that Glenn I'm gonna probably I'll I'll put put on this week just because uh you know I saved it for while I was on vacation, but that that Patrick yeah. Young 
one. Um, I think you guys are going to – I think people will get a kick out of it because you've probably never seen this side of Patrick Chung. And, I mean, you know, Glenn, Glenn's Glenn, – Glenn is he's, – uh, Patrick Chung is an interesting character, right? I And, I, and I'm and i not kidding you. Like, I, I – you know, we shoot these games. You see these guys. Pound for pound, I, and I told him this, you know, like he is definitely one of the toughest guys I've ever seen play football. This guy is not that big, and the collisions and the hits and the tight ends he's covered, you know, I think sometimes he's going to be out of a game and he comes back in. But, you know, we really kind of flipped the switch and, and just had some fun with him. And um, I think seeing this side of him and a Patriots player will be will be fun for people. So I think you'll enjoy that. Awesome. Uh-huh. Yeah, he took some shots cool. last year, and like you said, he just kept coming back. He is <laughs> oh, unbelievable. Yeah. He really is. Yeah, he pr- yeah, he probably shouldn't have uh, come back in the second half of that, that Super Bowl, and he just kept gutting it out and gutting it out. Like, he's tough. He, he He's definitely a hockey player at heart. Let's leave it like that. <laughs> yep. let's, put it at, let's put it like that. <laughs> no doubt. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Well, your love for uh, Neely, Glenn, uh, I'm starting to think you might be a long-last uncle of mine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, listen, I'm, <laughs> I'm just hoping he takes a good look at me in training camp. That's all I'm going to say. If there there's go. anything that – if he can get any any value out of a 40-plus uh, uh, slow and out-of-shape defenseman, I'm game. I'll give it a shot. <laughs> By the, by the way, I will say, I will say this. I'd be curious, maybe you guys uh, agree or not. The um, the Bruins this year reminds me, like being in on Tavares and a couple of the other guys. It reminds me a little bit of a few years ago where the Celtics were good and they were starting to get sniffs from these guys that you wouldn't think they normally would, and they didn't yeah. get them. You remember, you know, some of those guys that you know that they didn't get, but um, the Durant and all that. Mm-hmm. But it just feels like the Bruins are getting closer you know, to that point where they're going to get one of these guys soon. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we were talking about that on last week's episode. Exactly that. Like, they're close. You know, Durant. Yeah. And then the year yeah. after, they got Horford, and they got Hayward. Right. right. And, and it feels like yeah. the Bruins are heading in that direction yeah. where they're going to – people yeah. are going to want to – you know, they got to just got to get that guy. I mean um, – yeah, yeah, it's weird because they have their like bottom six. Even though you know Schaller left, and uh, oh my God, I, I'm ashamed. I can't remember the the name of the other guy who left. Oh, he was he was a minor guy. Agostino went to the Canadians. Like it's kind of like what they did in '11. They sort of built the bottom six, you know, and you hope that Chara can keep performing at least like he did last year, and you know maybe get their defense. Squared away. I, I don't know a lot about that guy more, but I know he's a pretty decent hockey player, and he he's going to provide some pretty decent snarl on the left side in the second pairing. So yeah, who knows? You know, I, I don't know. I, I think that they're they're definitely going to be in the fight for sure. You know, I yeah, know they're, they're young. Camp. Yeah, young, young, exciting to watch. Never give up. Yeah. I will say the other thing is too that that many people don't know is. Uh, Glenn is a little bit of a DJ, and so uh, early on in the playoffs, with some of the tweets, um, we, <laughs> we uh, he started he started sh- shooting the arrivals of the players, and then setting them to music and, and tweeting them out. So we we you know made like a DJ graphic of them because what's funny is you know you go to the Bruins games and you hear all the ACDC blasting in the arena. And then, Glenn, what do you hear when you walk by the Bruins locker room? Oh, it's just that crazy techno, that, like, unsa, unsa, unsa music and, like, 8,000 feet a minute and all that. The Euro guys the Euro guys run the music when they win the post game. I think that's, like, Krejci's room when it comes to the music. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Well, you have anything else, Steve? You want to – No, I'm good. Just – you know, promote yourself. Where can everyone find you on social media? That kind of stuff. Yeah, I mean, what? it's just at, it's uh, it's it's a little bit um of a mouthful, but it's um at capital N B C S, then capital C camera guys. So it's at N B C S camera guys 
everything before AMRA guys is capitalized. How's that? <laughs> that works. And some, something I think we're going to try to start doing a little bit too is uh, we want to throw it out so people can start um, putting in their own questions for these guys and we'll start asking some yep. players, you know, like non, non sport related uh, questions like, you know, maybe you want to take a, a lady out on a first date. Maybe we should go ask Mookie Betts what he would do on his first date, right? So, you know, we're going to start. We'll start. Uh, we have a couple of things like that we're going to start doing too. So, uh, yeah, make, make it a little more interactive. interactive. Yeah, for sure. That's genius. It's really. been, yeah, yeah. It's a blast. That's great. It's just been so much fun, you know. And Bill and I just they've they've given us the ball, and so far we haven't fumbled it. So we're going to keep running until they tell us we can't run anymore. You know. Yeah. Good stuff. Ooh. Yeah, I mean, watching you guys, you can tell you guys really love it. So. Oh, thank you. Well, that's that's yeah. cool. We really, hey, guys, we really appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, it, it's awesome, and we love the back and forth of you guys on the Twitter. Absolutely. I know you guys, have been, you guys have been great to us, and we really, we really appreciate all the people, especially you guys who have helped us. I mean, listen, don't get me wrong. It's not like, you know, we're these massive – this massive thing. Well, we are like massive people, but we're uh, <laughs> we're uh, <laughs> we're just really psyched that people have responded really well, and we just kind of appreciate everyone who has been really cool to us. You know, absolutely. Well, I'm going to go try to take a picture with a moose. Okay. <laughs> cool. Here awesome. You go. Yeah, All right, have cool. a good night, Thanks, guys. Thanks again. All right, guys. Appreciate Thank it. you so much. You're no welcome. Problem. Take it easy. All right, bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye. That was awesome. <laughs> that was quite a segment, huh? Oh, absolutely. Good guys. Yeah, you know, like I was saying, you can tell that they really love what they do, so can't beat that. No, but, I mean, they get to do stuff together. They've been friends for many years, and that's pretty decent. They can meet all these players and coaches and pretty much get free reign on what they're doing. And uh, they do really good stuff. Their videos are fantastic. Absolutely. I mean, some of them are funny, funny as hell. So, yeah. <laughs> you know. I can't wait for that Patrick Chung one. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. So you want to jump but, uh, into the Patriots a little bit? Yeah, we can break down what happened while we're on air. Yep, as you were saying, Edelman, suspension upheld. He's going to miss the first four games of the season. Now, how do they adapt without him? I guess is the big question. Well, you know they're going to find a way. That's just what they do. Yeah. I expect the, you know, the running backs are going to be really involved. Someone like uh, Jordan Matthews is going to have to step up his game. But I think he's going to be real good for him. Anyways, this season, the Patriots always adapt. They're always a chameleon from week to week anyway, so they'll get through it. Yeah, absolutely. Yep, healthy Gronk's important. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he said, I think the other day he said he's in the best shape he's ever been in, so he looks he looks like a freaking bodybuilder. It's ridiculous. So. Yeah, he's a big dude. Yeah, I can't wait. Uh, yeah. I mean, I guess my question to you would be what you think would be more damaging for the Patriots in four weeks. I don't mean a Gronk. Oh, you mean who, like, they didn't have? Yeah, like, if you... Who do you think would be a bigger blow to the team for four weeks? I don't mean a Gronk house would be now. Oh, Gronk, because, you know, they have, a, they have receivers besides Edelman that can get it done for four weeks, so you don't really have another tight end. He's pretty much yeah. it. I mean, right. Hollister and, you know, which he's got potential. And camp's going to be very interesting this season for sure, especially with the four games. You know, it's going to be really important to get off on the right foot with Belichick and company. Oh, yeah. I mean, that that Jacksonville game is a scary game. That's in Jacksonville, too. Yeah. Yeah, and they're going to want to rebound. You just wonder if Jacksonville's going to regress a little bit because you you see teams every year in football, they're not very consistent. They'll have a great team one year and then they'll disappear for four. Yeah, that's a good point. Like, 
guess we don't know, you know, how much the loss to the Patriots is going to affect them. Right. Yeah, I mean, let's face it, with eight minutes left, they had that game in the bag. I mean, realistically yeah. speaking, if we're, if we're being honest with ourselves, realistically, they should have won. They pretty much outplayed them all but the fourth quarter, essentially. Yeah, absolutely. Yep, they and definitely, you know, they had Tom and company way off balance. I mean, you don't see that much at all, but. You no, know, Brady does his thing, and the Jaguars are right there. That was a pretty damn scary time. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know, Jacksonville, perfect game plan on offense until the fourth. Yep. Well, that's all you have to do. You have to keep them off the field. Yeah. and company. Yeah, definitely. But the first but, four games is pretty interesting. It's kind of one of the toughest stretches of the season, isn't it? Oh, yeah, easy. Man, it's probably their toughest four games of the year. I mean, Green Bay's later in the year. Who knows? how they're going to be doing by the time they play the Pats. Detroit's an interesting game just because, you know, Patricia. Right. What I've never understood is why do they have the suspension in the first four games of the month? If you really want to hit a team, you hit them at the end of the month, end of the season, rather, where you're really jockeying for position sometimes. I mean, every every week is important, but... As you get further on, the games get magnified a lot more. Oh, absolutely. Let's not give Goodell any uh, good ideas, though. Yeah, I doubt he's <laughs> listening to us. So I wouldn't right. worry about it. <laughs> hey, you never know. <laughs> I'm pretty confident he's not. So, <laughs> if he was, then damn. But I don't. I don't think he is. I mean, are you really? Is anyone really surprised that it's four games? Um, I don't know, I guess the wording when the initial suspension came out, you know, the whole unrecognizable substance would kind of make you think, oh, maybe this is getting thrown out. But a couple of days after that, they're like, oh, no, they, you know, after a couple of days, they figured out what it was. So it's like, well, you just said that they didn't know what it was, and now they do. So am I surprised that? No. But... Do they though? Because I haven't heard heard what it is yet. Have you? No. I mean, a lot of times you don't hear what it is unless the player comes out and says it. I don't think Edelman's probably not surprised by the rule, and honestly, I doubt no. he is. No. I mean, am, am I mad at him for doing it and wanting to get back quicker? Hell no. No. <laughs> how can you? Yeah. I mean, that's the nature of the business, especially in the NFL. Oh, absolutely. Like, I mean, they get the crap beat out of them on a play-by-play basis. Right. You know, they should be taking something. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, just to survive the freaking season. Brutal. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. And then some fans, are, oh, I can't believe he took something. It's like, really? He's 32, right? Coming off a major yeah. knee injury. Potentially worried about his job because he's on the Patriots. And we all know how that kind of happens. Like, Bill gets rid of you a year too early rather than a year too late. So that could have been going through his head. Who knows? Wants right. to get back so he can play with Brady, et cetera, because he knows they have another good shot to make it to the Super Bowl. Yeah. I don't blame him at all. Whatever. It's his body. Do what you want. Exactly. It's not like he's yeah. taking steroids or anything. Yeah. You know, the whole high horse nonsense. I wouldn't do that. Yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Well, You're you sitting know, on you your know, couch. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, you know, for a fact, uh, one thing is uh, had Robert Williams been a patriot, he'd already been released already. Oh, God, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that first thing, he missed the phone conference. He misses that, like you said. He would have been gone. There wouldn't have been a second opportunity with him. Yeah, and then, what, then he missed his flight or, or something like that. Yeah, Belichick would go crazy. Oh, yeah, Jesus. <laughs> It'd be basically, don't even bother showing up. If you're all right. Yep, good luck in your future endeavors type of thing. 
<laughs> well, I think uh, overall the Patriots will be they'll be okay, I believe. Yeah, like you said, they got enough weapons. They got enough offense. I'm really curious to see how the defense performs. You know, with High Tower back, the guys they added on defense, McCordy. He's a decent cornerback. I don't know how are they going to do yeah. without Butler? That kind of stuff. Right. Exactly. Well, there's new pieces but, every year. You know, Flores, like how's the defense? Much, yeah. yeah, how's the defense going to change with Flores in charge? Hopefully they're right. more aggressive. That kind of stuff, not sitting back. Yeah, exactly. I mean, we'll that's see. what I we'll, want to see. We'll have plenty of time to break them down in the next episode. Yeah, absolutely. So. Oh, we got pretty that. much for the Patriots. Jump into the Sox. Sure. Cool. Yeah, so Yankees series didn't really go how both of us planned, really. I mean, there was three blowouts. Erod yeah. got shelled pretty good on Friday night. Chris Sale on Saturday looked like the best pitcher in the league. Yep. And then David Price crapped his pants on Sunday. <laughs> I don't know. It's a oh. situation where I don't think either teams, like I've said many times, is going to pull away from each other. Right. No way. No, I think, mean, you know, match. Yeah, each and team has enough holes. And I think it, in a best of seven series, is a coin flip. Yeah. Yep. If they make it really? that far, like, I mean, obviously the trade day line is coming up, so both of them are probably going to make moves. You and would think. think that the Yankees got money to spend, and they have a better farm system, so they can technically outbid the Sox if they really want to. Oh, yeah. Yeah, their farm system's loaded. Well, ours isn't as much anymore. It's no. Like the Bruins one. No, nah, I mean, Dombrowski's used a lot of them to get, you know, sale, etc. You know, a lot of the trades that he's he used his prospects on haven't worked out, aside from sale. Right, yeah, I know Carson Smith's been a bust. Yeah, we haven't seen what Thornburg can do yet. He's been in the minors since he's been here. Yeah, he uh, he should be up soon, they keep saying. Oh, well, they've been saying that for... Yeah, for right, every couple of weeks. Of the season, <laughs> he sits yeah. you up and he's still not up. And then yeah. we got the situation with Pedroia now, which I think he's all done for the season. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because he went back to the doctor who did this procedure and haven't heard anything since, really. No, and they got this new Pierce guy yeah. to fill in, and they got... Uh, Who's the other guy that gets picked up? Is it Brandon Phillips? Yeah, they got him. Yeah. So you you have to think internally. They think something's really up with them. No, I'm sure they already know. They're just not really saying anything. Right. But overall, I mean, the Sox are still doing their thing. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yep, they could... Hopefully, you know, if Thornburg can come back, that could be huge for the bullpen. He was kind of yeah. like their eighth inning guy before he got hurt. That was what he was slated to be, and he's been hurt ever since, like you said. Would you go but, for another pitch in the rotation? <sighs> Maybe not like a one or a two, but yeah. like something that like on the really back end, or you just kind of play it out until Wright gets back because Palmer has got shelled yesterday. Right. Oh, my God. If he's getting shelled by minor leaguers, he's in trouble. Yeah, it was four home runs and two and two-thirds in. And yeah, and he's like, oh, I, you know, <laughs> no, he's like, oh, he threw pretty good. Really? <laughs> well, I wonder sometimes yeah. with rehabs if they're – not so much focused on the actual box scores. They are how they feel. Yeah. Mechanically. 
Yeah, it's probably accurate, but seeing it as a fan, you're like, oh, my God. <laughs> right. Here we go. No, I mean, we've talked about a Pomerantz. I wanted him in the bullpen, but now Stephen Wright's hurt. So it's, Exactly. So, you know, what are you going to do? You're, back? Gonna, you're gonna get a spot start from someone, Johnson or whoever. Yeah, Johnson's pitching tonight. He's already done five and two-thirds, a couple runs. Could be a lot worse. Yeah, it's tough. Yeah, I mean, if they can go out and get it, like a number three or four pitcher, you know, something like that without giving up a, a ton, I'd go do it. Like uh, E-Rod, how do you feel about him? I mean, he's kind of catch and go. Yeah, yeah, he's hot and cold. He's a, like a number five, pretty much. Yeah, exactly. Well, I think the I think the top ceiling for him is a three. Yeah, I think that's pretty much where he's going to be at in his career. Yep, definitely. Yeah, that's suspect anything more, but he's going to stay healthy. Price because you don't know what you're going to get out of him. Oh God, yeah, yeah. He pitches great for you know spurts, and then he goes south. There's something about Yankee Stadium and the Yankees that get to him. Yeah, pretty sure he's like 0-5 in Yankee Stadium as a Red Sox pitcher. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, which, I mean, if you, you know, if you can't do that, it's like, what's the use? Right. Not very good. No. No. But they've got holes. I mean, they, they need to tinker a little bit and get things under control. Yep. Yeah, they have to do something. I mean, they can't go three years in a row getting the same result. That's just if crazy. They had, if they won over 100 games and missed the playoffs, that would be a travesty. <laughs> you imagine that, my God. Even, I mean, even the Yankees, I know we all hate the Yankees, but even if the Yankees won 100 games and missed the postseason, that would be criminal in itself, too. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, well, going out and getting Stanton and then missing the playoffs. Well, they'd hear it. If they, if they were in the AL Central right now, the Red Sox would be up on 19 games. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Wow. That's insanity. You really think about it. Yeah, so do you want to get to the podcast questions? Yeah, sure. Cool. All right. It's from one's from Rick Gilman. Do you think David Price realistically will opt out of his contract after this season? You want want me to take that one? Yeah. Go ahead. I think it depends if he feels there's a market for him and how bad he wants to get out of Boston. I mean. I don't think he's going to for some reason. I think he's going to stay put. Because you don't know what you're going to get out of him. Yeah. I know he he hates it here, but does he hate the money he's getting? That's what it's going to come <laughs> down to. Right. So I don't know. I, it's a tough question. I think he's going to stay. I kind of hope he goes, but oh, I want him to go, but... I get a feeling he's going to stick around. What do you think? I'm with you on hoping he leaves. Just I hope he does enough to where he's attractive to some like small market team and he leaves. Right. It's going to be real difficult for him to opt out of that contract. Yeah, I mean, like this year, if they make it to the playoffs, how do you put him in the rotation? I think the only thing you can do is just see how he's pitching up until the playoffs mm-hmm. start. Realistically. I mean, you yeah, need I'll David think. Price. No, no yeah. matter how pissed off we get at him, you need him. Right. Which makes it worse than when he goes out and gets gives up five home runs against the Yankees. I just wonder if he did opt out if the Red Sox even bother trying to bring him back on anything. I don't think they would. Right? Yeah, no, I wouldn't think so. But who knows? It's a crazy, crazy world for that kind of stuff. He's got 
that ridiculous contract. So unless he's really, really beyond miserable, which we all think he is, I don't see him leaving that much money on the table. Right. Who knows? It's hard to say, but we'll find out. Right. Yeah, let's get to the year first, hopefully. Long postseason run. I mean, if he goes, if he goes, if the Red Sox make the postseason and he actually performs well in the postseason, that will go a long way for him leaving. Oh, absolutely. But if he goes out there and gets shelled, he's not going anywhere. Yeah. Yeah, it's a double edged sword. Can't stand I mean, the guy, but you need him to do good. Who's to say that he actually hates Boston so much as far as the clubhouse people? It could be just the reporters he hates. It wouldn't be oh, the yeah. first time that's happened. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So it's a hard it's hard to figure that guy out. He's so different. Basically. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. So what else you got? Uh, another one from Rich. Is Dustin Pedroia done? We pretty much touched on it. I think he's done for the season, possibly career ender with yeah. the way that knee is. It wouldn't surprise yeah. me at all if he's done totally. Me, Shitty uh, way to go out. At some point, he's got to put his future ahead of his playing career, life after baseball. He's got to think about that at some point. Yeah, exactly. It's got it's got to come into you know his mind at some point. Yep, definitely. So yeah, I think he's done. What else we got? Uh, one from Don. I was talking about the jewel suspension. Like any news, we touched on that already. Still suspended right. four games. And she was also asking about price, like how come he can't pitch against the big boys? <laughs> it's a mind thing, I think. More yeah, than. yeah, it's definitely a mindset. Like he almost maybe he gets himself too psyched up about games against the Yankees, Houston, those kinds of teams, and like the little teams. He's like, yeah, it's just another game. You know, it's crazy. Yeah. Absolutely. So you want to wrap this up? Yeah, let's wrap else? it up. No, that's all I got. So that's thanks so everyone in advance for uh, listening, sharing, downloading this episode whenever you do. We definitely appreciate it. You can find the podcast on iTunes, Google Play, uh, WTPSports.com, 12 Ounce Radio, Full Press Radio. On our website, www.diehardbostonsportsfans.com. So, it's pretty much wherever our podcast is at, you can find us. So, thanks again to the camera boys, Glenn and Moose. Uh, also, Ryan Patton for coming on with us. Definitely appreciate it. Have a good day or night whenever you listen to it. And, oh, we almost forgot to mention our uh, social media handles. Twitter, diehard boss fans. Uh, we play for titles. What's yours now? I am uh, at Chris underscore Blackie. And Facebook, diehard Boston sports fans page and the group. If you want to get on the group, talk Boston sports with us. Also, just started a page specifically for the podcast. So look up Steve in the Hood presents Boston sports podcast. You'll find it. Like the page if you're there. Share it. Definitely appreciate it. Again, have a good day or night whenever you listen to it. See ya. See ya.